Here we go. YouTube is live, and here comes Facebook. All right, welcome aboard, everyone. Happy Wednesday. It is the uh, 21st. We've got one more Wednesday of the month left in April, and then we're going to be sneaking on into May, getting into some warmer weather, hopefully. Uh, by the looks of it, it's a little chilly last couple of days, but we had a really nice weekend. Uh, that was really nice. Sunny skies, 60s both days. Can we please go back? Yeah. Yeah, it, w it really was not a bad weekend. I, like I said, no complaints, I think. And then we didn't want to talk about what we were heading into, but we know it's going to come back. Everything rebounds quickly. We're heading to May. Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> I gotta tell you, yeah, you probably felt like I did. It was so painful to have to bring back the snow graphics, the accumulation graphics, and to see the blue on future track again. This is, oh, I thought we could put it to bed, but that wasn't the case. Nope, nope. But uh, here in the Quad Cities, we got lucky. We missed out. We said the South can have it. Yes. Yes. We think, I think the Central think, Illinois think people are more party than we are. Party. I don't know. I think yeah, I have a I have a friend who works in Peoria, and he's a he's a meteorologist there. He loves snow, so he was ecstatic to be tracking it. <laughs> yeah, and that's where it all yeah, ended, up. It all ended uh, up. Thankfully, so uh, we're not going so to have to worry about that. Worry about that. And hopefully, and hopefully, that's the last that's about the last snow, the snow, or at least the threat of it anyway, that, that we're going to see for the rest of the season anyway, season anyway. Uh, at least until uh, the, at least end, the end, 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 of end of the year. The end of the year. So fingers crossed. But that is going to be it. Fingers are crossed. <laughs> and toes I've said we've been done toes. before. And then Catherine called me out on it because I said we were done. <laughs> Catherine's got a good memory. Uh, which she I does. Wish, I wish I had the memory that she had. I'm so insanely jealous. <laughs> um, as we go through uh, our, our forecast discussion here in just a moment, you'll see that in a second. We're going to be talking also about weather folklore which is an interesting topic. There's a lot of them out there. We've already kind of debunked a couple of them in Verify, uh, if you've been keeping track on air uh, during the newscast, but we've got some more for you today, so it's a really neat one. And uh, so we'll go over that. Thanks for joining us as always. If you think this video is really cool, which hopefully you do, go ahead and give it a share on our page. We do this every Wednesday, as long as our schedule allows, at one o'clock. So let's start with a little uh, forecast Pow wow, if you will. I'll show you what's going on here once I get that enlarged. So we can see, there we go. So a lot of instability uh, showers trying to develop. You can see south of the Quad Cities. And it's almost like that popcorn type precipitation that you see on radar there. And, and even the clouds, you can see that too. But a few peaks of sunshine here. How's it looking at Davenport? Uh, it was super sunny, beautiful this morning. I loved it. And now it's really kind of taken over by clouds. But uh, I'm sure there will be peaks of sunshine, obviously, looking at that radar image. Very popcorny, like you said. Yeah, and we have um, a lot of cold air aloft. And the fact that we're getting just a little bit of sun and that sun we had this morning, it's really adding to that instability, if you will. It's not unstable enough to give us any severe weather. But uh, anytime you have that real cold air mass a lot, this is exactly what you're going to see. And I got to give a shout out to Corey uh, Marshall because he just sent this text message to me literally right now as we're talking. He has got lenticular clouds uh, down in his location, which is either going to be near Galesburg or I think it's Lewis Town, I think is the other place that he might live. But there's the oh. lenticular clouds that Corey is actually seeing uh, to our south. Nice. How That's super cool. Is that? That is super cool. Lenticular clouds, if you don't know, they kind of look like disks yes. or uh, yes. spaceships, UFOs in the sky. And they're usually um, around areas that have um, very hilly terrain, especially mountains. So finding them just out of nowhere here, that's a pretty uncommon experience. Yeah, I can honestly say I don't think I've ever seen them in person. <laughs> Real, I've seen them, I think I've seen them once or twice, one near a mountain, and then the other one was storm chasing, and we were just in a flat area, so it was super cool to see them, because they're not very common and over flat terrain. 
That is awesome. Well, thanks, Corey, for, for sharing. If you're watching along with us, we appreciate that. I think you've got them on Twitter as well. We'll have to retweet those. Those are some nice uh, pictures. Hopefully you send it to James as well. He might want to show that uh, on the air for this evening. Really cool stuff, though. Very, very cool. Temperature-wise, yeah, it's a little chilly. We should be in the mid-60s this time. Of year. We're in the <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be on my best behavior. I really am. Uh, we got to keep it uh, keep it PG and G related here. Freeze warning. It looks like again for tonight into tomorrow. You guys know the drill. A little skinny dipping. No, I'm kidding. You want to uh, make sure that you bring in uh, plants that are susceptible, uh, things like that. Uh, we, we've gone through this a number of times now. We know what to expect uh, with that. Interestingly enough, I this just caught the corner of my eye. Thinking maybe some influence from the lake there. I don't even know what that's about. But yeah, I don't know what that's about either. Uh, I've seen some. I even had a friend who's in Chicago this morning send a video of snowflakes flying there still this morning. So that's. Wow. Maybe Weather's weird. More energy or something in that could maybe some of those convective snow showers. Yes. Uh, pulling through there. There's where we go though. I am really loving next week, and I'm I'm happy to see that Eric put the 80 on board. I talked about that this week, and I said I think we have a good chance of some of us seeing that first 80 this week. And it, or yes. Next week. Uh, and it looks like yes. we're going to see that. Absolutely, and we could. And Andrew and I were just talking about this before we even got on here. That chance of we've been seeing on models that there's a hint we could get some thunderstorms next week. Yes. Problem is, is it's gonna is it gonna hold? Is it gonna stick with us? Is it just gonna turn out to flop and be rain? Who knows? But we've got some some hints. Yeah, and we've really been fortunate so far this spring. We have not had to deal with um, really any major bouts of severe weather at all so far. Uh, so we'll see if that same luck will hold as things warm up next weekend. Uh, especially into May, because May is really kind of the peak, at least, uh, for tornadoes and, and things like that around here. Though that still holds true for the month of June, by the way, too, statistically speaking. So we've still got at least two, three months that we really got to kind of keep our eye on things uh, for the peak of our severe weather season. It's quiet so far, but that doesn't mean it's going to stay like that uh, as we head throughout uh, the next several months. So that's what we're looking at in terms of our uh, forecast discussion today. We'll go ahead and we will dive right in i may have to oh you're gonna put the the bottle down so we can hear okay i'm gonna let morgan start off for a second because i may have to relocate the uh fur child <laughs> oh cooper <laughs> there he is he's so cute all right yeah, we got a quick agenda today, just going through the history, and then we will go into a ton of the popular folklores. There are so many folklores out there, so we're just kind of touching into some of the popular ones. A lot of them have to do with animals, um, and if you have any popular folklores that you know of, share them. I would love to hear them. A or Eric even brought one up this morning on the 11 a.m. show that I didn't even know about, so... There's just so many out there, but so we'll quickly just dive into some of the history behind weather folklores, why they are so popular, um, and really it's interesting. And obviously us as humans, we're creatures of habit. We just like to have things that rhyme and things that stick with us to remember things. And back uh, a long time ago when we did not have modern meteorology, and technology, people would use these sayings, use these rhymes and stories to describe the weather phenomenons to help predict those weather changes. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of neat history that's behind this too, uh, going all the way back to uh, easily even earlier than the 1800s, even farther back from that. Uh, and it, there's a neat little book that I got and I showed you this last week. I've kind of been digging through it. And it really is amazing just how basic some of those principles were that were in that book. Uh, but you look at the book today and it's like, oh my goodness, this is crazy talk. Uh, looking at uh, things like frogs and, the, uh, and some other things. I think there was an earthworm one in there, um, how active those were. Um, so a lot of interesting stuff to read nonetheless, I'll put it that way. Uh, so if you, go yes. the, if you go to the history of this anyway, 
Uh, this, of course, is well before venerology was even established, before it was even a, a thing. Uh, and of course, no technology really to, uh, to help with any of this in terms of explaining it. So people would often use these sayings and these rhymes and stories to help describe the weather phenomenons uh, and help to predict the weather changes. It makes sense. We didn't have radar back then, we didn't have satellites. Um, most people immigrating to a new country here in, in America, not knowing what the established weather patterns were, they kind of needed a tool, if you will, to kind of help put this puzzle piece together uh, in, in terms of predicting these different patterns. Some are true, uh, and, and it is amazing how some of them are true today, too, because you read them and it's like, really? That's a, that's a, a legit thing? It's, yeah, it is. Uh, and some are extremely false. And so we're going to break some of those down here uh, coming up. Exactly. And some of the people who probably came up with these phrases or became extremely knowledgeable on the weather because of how often they were in the elements and also studying it. But a lot of them come from those who needed to be adept or be able to change on the fly when those weather conditions would change with it. That would be those sailors, the mariners. Out at sea, changing weather conditions means sea conditions obviously can turn very dangerous very quickly. So there is a lot of folklore out there that does have to describe with um, sea and sailors and different ways that they can kind of expect, are we going to see rain? Can those ocean conditions get rough as we're sailing out? I can't imagine being a sailor at the time where there's no technology and you just kind of have to go off of what your gut is saying. I mean, look what happened with the Titanic. Granted, it wasn't right? you know, totally weather related, but no technology to be able to scan what's in front of you other than visually. Yes. Th that irks me, but yeah. good thing we're now in the world of modern technology. But that leads us into our first folklore, which is a very, very popular one, which is the one that a lot of people have heard, have known, and that is red sky at night, sailor's delight, red sky in the morning, sailors take warning. Is it true or is it false? <laughs> That's the age old question. It's one of those things where it sounds so basic and, and you think, okay, yeah, we have these really beautiful sunsets all, all the time. Do we, do you remember what the weather was like the next day or the next morning? Mm. Guess what? It's true. It is true, but only for people in the mid latitudes, which is where we are. <laughs> when, yes. So when you see the, the red sky during the sunset and the sunrise, there's an abundance of dust and particles. This happens when a high pressure system is in place due to the sinking air and the fair weather. Makes sense. When there's a red sunset, sailors delight. You have high pressure to the west. Our weather in the mid latitudes, of course, it travels from west to east. So that means fair weather is heading your way. That makes sense. Yeah, so it's got some truth behind it. Uh, but yes, again, it is only only uh, relevant to those who live in those mid latitudes and we're lucky. So yes, you can kind of use some knowledge behind that. Of course, it's not going to always happen, but there is truth behind this saying. Yeah, there's there's some merit behind there. Just don't go and tell people the equator this because it, uh, <laughs> it will backfire on you very quickly. <laughs> All right, the next one, we got a ring around the sun or moon means rain will come real soon. This is a good one. I've seen this numerous times before. This is, a, I like this. This is a good one. What do you think, Cooper? True or false? <laughs> well, you just looked at me, so I think he thinks it's true. Oh? Sometimes it's true. Sometimes. Sometimes. So the rings around the sun or the moon, they're caused by the ice crystals in the upper levels of the atmosphere, a.k.a. cirrus clouds. The real high, thin clouds that you usually shoot off the top of a thunderstorm or rain or another extensive cloud deck that's sitting off to your west. So the cirrus clouds, they can actually be an indicator that an area of low pressure is arriving, which, of course, can bring us rain and storms. And you can see this any time of the year. I've seen it in the winter. 
Um, it's most prevalent, I would say, in the winter because you're dealing with a lot of those finer water particles that are suspended in the air versus uh, spring and summer. But certainly you can see this uh, any time of year. Uh, probably, again, more so in the winter just because of the, the finer water particles associated with the snow and things like that. Yes, absolutely. It's uh, A lot of these things can be indicators. Again, it's sometimes true. It's not meaning like every time you see this halo, we're going to get significant weather the next day. But maybe around us, somewhere around the Midwest, we're seeing a little bit of a change. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. James likes to talk about this one a lot on air. Uh, the woolly bear caterpillar, can it predict winter weather? So the little bit of a background behind this folklore, the folklore says the longer the black band on the woolly bear means it's going to be a longer and snowier winter. But if that little brown red band um, is a longer, then we will have a milder winter. Yep, and I've heard that many a times too. Many, many, many good times. It's another popular one. We're kind of diving into all things bugs, animals now, because <laughs> a lot of people study those animals, and some animals do have some some significance when it comes to weather. Yes. I, I'm on the fence about this one, just because I've heard it from so many different people, and I've heard different versions. I'm kind of leaning towards it being true, and I haven't cheated yet. I haven't looked at the next preview. Let's see. Oh, it's false. It's false. Now, that doesn't mean that the length of the stripes is not weather associated, but it has nothing to do with the prediction of the future. It's more so a reading of the past. So a caterpillar can't predict old man winter for us. But it can tell us previous seasons. So if the woolly bear has a good growing season, that red, orange, brown band in the middle will be narrower. So the woolly bear caterpillar's coloring is based on how long the caterpillar has been feeding, its age, and its species. So if it had a good feeding season, then that means the weather was nice. And so we can kind of learn about past rather than future. I am surprised, but it, it, it makes sense. That's a great explanation. Uh, as to why yes. it would be. So remember that when you see them crawling all around the road uh, in the fall, especially if you're in the country, they're all over the place, all over the roads, uh, to kind of keep that in mind. That's pretty Hi, cool. Cooper. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's our favorite <laughs> non-meteorologist <laughs> rodent that Right. Everyone in the weather community despises with <laughs> passion. Can a groundhog predict an early spring? And already, I think this photo is giving it away. Look what's in that gentleman's hand. I do believe that's a treat. <laughs> it I looks like one of those Murano cookies. <laughs> you know, it does. I, I think the person there is bribing the groundhog. Um, I think we need an it's investigation. Like, tell them it's going to be spring. Tell them. <laughs> <laughs> So is this one, is this true or false? Now remember, what's what the groundhog has said this year uh, and last year as well. It, the tale actually originated in Europe based off the tradition of Candlemas, like Christmas, a holiday to uh, bless and distribute candles. If skies were clear on the Candlemas, a long winter was ahead. And of course we know if it was cloudy and the groundhog didn't see a shadow that we're gonna see in early spring. So what do we think? Do we think it's true? Or do we think it's false? We I think Andrew with, gave it away with the rants. I think I did too. Do we want to side with science and reasoning and understanding? Or do we want to side with fairy tales and nonsense? What? Which one do we choose? <laughs> there it is. It's false. Science it's and false. Science. It's just a fun tradition, again, with European and German background to it. Puxitani Phil has only been right about 40% of the time. You'd have better odds flipping a coin at that point uh, 
to see which one's gonna happen. Uh, so this year, 2021, Phil saw his shadow, which means six more weeks of winter. We had a brutal February right after he predicted that. And then we went to an above average March. And then now we've kind of gone into this huge roller coaster effect through April. So what do you think? Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> And then last year he predicted a long or a long win or an early spring. He yes. he predicted the opposite. An early spring last year. And we had seven inches of snow in April, didn't we? we did. Yes. <laughs> also wrong. <laughs> also not right. His percentage is, is not creeping any higher. It's if anything, I think it's getting lower. I think it's at like 39.96% as of now. Probably. And falling fast. <laughs> but I like this one. I'm, I'm glad you included this one in here because this is probably the most well known one. Oh, it's course, usually the most well known. We have it's an entire day surrounding it. Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Next up, you got can the crickets accurately tell you the air temperature? It's almost like counting the seconds after but uh, between lightning and thunder, you know, to calculate the distance. Can we actually count the number of chirps, if you will, to calculate the temperature? Can we do this? It's true. It is true. And did you know male crickets are the only ones who chirp? Only male crickets chirp. They do so by rubbing their wings together. This is easier for crickets to do when it is warmer out. So the frequency of the chirps are going to be higher the warmer it is outside. So it's actually true you can do this. How can you estimate the temperature using cricket chirps? Good question. The lovely Eric Sorensen created this graphic a long time ago and I took it, so. <laughs> And she's not ashamed that she took it. <laughs> no, no. And all you have to do is just count the number, which I've never done this. I need to do this. But you just count the number of chirps in 15 seconds. So you could just set a timer on your phone, count the number of chirps in those 15 seconds, and then you just add the number 40, and then you will get fairly close to what the actual outdoor temperature is. Isn't that cool? I, I have not tried this either, and now I want to try it. So the first opportunity where I hear a cricket, I'm going to try it. I think I'm, I'm thinking once, yes, when I start hearing crickets again, it starts to get warmer. I will film. I will film and create a little digital story piece of me counting the crickets and then seeing what the actual air there is. Maybe I'll try to do this over a period of time and see how accurate it is because yeah. what i've read it's accurate that is really cool yeah i'd be interested to see how close they are um and consistently too if it's a consistent thing so another thing you know uh, you know how to do the distance between uh, lightning strikes there and, and the thunder and now you know a quick way to calculate the temperature good stuff good boy um, are, are frogs able to predict when the rain is coming? True or false? Well, this one's kind of sitting in the water, and I think for most of the time they sit in the water. So they're already wet. How in the world would they be able to predict if rain is coming? Beats me. <laughs> I, so, Andrew sent me this one. <laughs> and I... Did a lot. I tried to do as much research as possible. There's not, not research on it, but from what I got, it's kind of like to each year, their own. I mean, like you said, frogs, they're found near water. They like moist environments. So I said it's true. It kind of is associated with their croaks. Uh, the main reason why male frogs croak when trying to find a mate. That's the main reason why they are croaking. But rain creates optimal conditions for laying eggs in fresh pools of water. So when it's raining, you're gonna get a lot more frequency in those croaks. You're gonna hear them, they'll get louder. 
Frogs also love water, so they are very, very happy when the air is nice and humid too, which is what we usually see, an increase in moisture before those rain and storms. So you'll likely hear frogs croak more after it rains, <laughs> but you might hear them a little bit before a storm too. Yeah, this, in, in reading this, it does make sense. So we've got a pond at my mom's house in Sterling, and yeah, anytime after a storm or a rain, it seems like they are much more vocal uh, in terms of the sound that they make. Yes, that's what it also seems like. And then you also sent me, there was another thing with frogs. Uh, frogs are big all over. Like, you find them on every part of the world, except for probably Antarctica. But you do find them on every other continent. And so frogs are a lot, are studied a lot when it does come to weather. There was... The book I think you sent me said that some areas in Europe and Germany uh, will keep a frog in a glass jar with a ladder. Yep. And they they say that the barometric pressure change will cause them to either climb up the ladder or be lower on the ladder. Which I don't think that's true. But <laughs> yeah, that's in it was interesting. The things we did to frogs. <laughs> the things we did. It's still cool, though. It, it is cool that, that that does have a link uh, between the rain, of course, and, and what they're doing. Yes, absolutely. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Cooper, you just want to be a part of all the fun. Oh, there goes the headphones. <laughs> there we go. You are all over the place today. Very cool. Oh, man. I keep on getting the work notifications. I need to pause them. Oh, okay. yeah. That's the uh, the famous Slack noise. Yes, it is. <laughs> all right. So we have reached the end of uh, today's university curriculum, if you will. We're going to go ahead and we'll log on and take a look and see if we've got any questions, comments that we can go through. Um, you, mister, need to get off the desk. <laughs> You need to get off the desk. Hi, Cooper. Hi, Cooper. Off as a You're such a pretty boy. He's a happy boy. <laughs> He's, happy. He's a big boy. Mm -hmm. All right. Um... Let's see how I can get this to come up here. Okay, I got the main page. We have, hold on, I thought I saw more. Okay, now we have Linnell. I think she's usually on your page. Mm -hmm. Um, saying hello to us from Sunny Elizabeth. So she's got some sun. Nice. We have Matt saying hello from Burlington. Matt, I'm sure you saw a little bit of snow. Um. Linnell also says, thanks for sharing my pick on Sunday night, Andrew. Absolutely. It was beautiful. Beautiful color. Uh, Bobby's saying hi from Bradford, Illinois. Nice. Linnell checking in saying that her van says it's 47 there. So. Burr. It's a chilly day. It is. Windy. Um, Sally saying hello from Muscatine. Tina saying, happy Wednesday from Galva. Neat clouds. Looks like the weather is going to be better day by day. Yes. And she also says, you can still be my friend, Andrew. <laughs> hey, at least I'm not losing them. <laughs> right? Um, and then Linnell was just commenting on Cooper because Cooper's been very active with our, our university today. <laughs> Um, she also said, if it's going to, it's going to rain if my knee hurts, arthritis. Yes, that, in fact, Eric does that, uh, aches and pains forecast in the mm -hmm. 11 with the pressure changes. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. She also was commenting on, I think, before we even jumped in to the red in the morning, sailor's warning, red at night, sailor's delight. It's a popular one. It is. It's, it's very well known. Almost as popular as the river and tornado. 
Um, I'm quickly just jumped over to my page and then I have David checking in was just, I think playing along, playing along and saying true alongside, uh, one of the folklores. And then my dad checking in saying hi to us and saying that he received three inches of snow last night in Indianapolis. Oh, wow. You can have it dad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Please keep it there. Morgan's dad. Please keep it. There. <laughs> Awesome. Mine just pulled up finally. It takes forever. I don't know why. <laughs> Hello. Um, we have Cindy Malacote saying, when your joints all start to ache, rainy weather is at stake. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. And it rhymes. I like that. Uh, Amy says, cool to know. She also says hello. And hello to Cooper. And also says, Cooper, are you ready to go for a walk? We had one this morning. We might have to go for another one, though, tonight uh, after work because someone's a little active today. <laughs> we have um, Lenny as well saying hello to uh, Morgan and I from Sterling. She says it's sunny in Sterling, which is awesome. Excellent. And that's all I have on my page. Nice. Have you done a sneak peek? to see what's coming up next. Uh, we have, I, we're kind of continuing this, but taking a little bit of a different direction. We're going into weather myths. Oh, yes. Weather myths. Awesome. Um, so we actually just did a weather verify on one of the myths we will once again jump in and discuss, which is the river. And tornadoes. Yep. There's kind of a, a new one we're going to be doing. We're actually going to be interviewing the person today, but this will be coming next week. Um, and it is kind of, I guess you could put it in the myth category uh, regarding winter and bugs. Does a really cold winter mean we're not going to see as, as much bug activity? Um, so we're going to verify that. We're actually speaking to our expert this afternoon right after this uh, live chat here. So... That'll be the one that's coming out uh, next week. As always, we're still looking for your ideas. If you've seen something uh, that you want us to verify, whether it's true or not, uh, especially on the weather-related side, go ahead and forward it to us, uh, and we'll look into it. Absolutely. Oh, we, we would love to see what myths are out there, because we're coming up with them ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, not coming uh, up with them, but finding them. <laughs> right. We need, uh, we need some more participation, if you will, um, from you guys, the viewer side, uh, to get us some more ideas. Because we can only come up with so many ideas, and then our idea bank just kind of runs itself out. So if you got some, throw them our way. I don't think it's it's too dumb or anything like that. There's, there's no such thing as, I used to say in school, there's no such thing as a dumb or a stupid question. There really isn't. Um, in fact... I've had a number of kids that, that say they're like, well, I don't want to ask this question because I think it's dumb. And it's like, it turned out to be a really awesome question. And we learned quite a bit. So, yeah, don't uh, don't be bashful at all when it comes to, to answering those questions. We'd be happy to, uh, or asking those questions, we'd be happy to answer it. Absolutely. Ask away. There is no, like Andrew said, no stupid question. Nope. Not at all. All right, we're going to hop off, uh, get ready for our next uh, Verify segment that, again, is coming next week. Not sure on a day yet, probably after Monday because we got to do some editing uh, after the weekend, but uh, it is coming next week. We'll also see you again for Storm Track 8 University. As far as I know, no big schedule changes next week. Um, I think we'll both be here Wednesday. There's big schedule changes next week. <laughs> there is? What? Andrew's, or Eric's gone. Oh, that's right. He's on vacation. Yes. yes, he is so going on vacation. Yes. Um, I forgot I'm working Tuesday. You're working Tuesday. I got I got Eric's pack Wednesday through Friday. <laughs> All right, so I I'll probably solo perhaps university next week. We'll see what happens. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. But you get to um, see us both many mornings many next week. <laughs> exactly. Also. Uh, I was just went back to the Facebook page yeah. and I saw, yeah. I see Rick and I think he is, he was uh, trying to put in his two cents on either the verify or the, um, 
myths, but he said weather modification. <laughs> and oh, funny you oh. say that, Rick. We tried. <laughs> so let me tell you, yes, we were we were planning on and hoping to do one on weather modification, but finding an expert um, to talk to has proved to be extremely difficult. Uh, the one we were going to focus on uh, at first was going to be the Chinese weather control because that's the most active one that I've seen uh, where the Chinese government uh, has been purported to be doing uh, some type of weather modification uh, in their part of the world. Uh, so I'm, I'm still trying to research some good um, people to get in contact with that about. Uh, I think I did find one American company that uh, I may be able to get some contact info for, hopefully. Uh, but I can tell you, wow, trying to get any information uh, when it comes to outside of our borders is proving to be difficult. Uh, because, of course, again, you have to find an impartial source uh, and someone who is not going to be biased. So a lot of times we are going to be looking at um, researchers and uh, people who are educators in this field. Uh, and that's been quite a challenge to try and find people uh, because they move all over the place. Uh, there's no reliable phone number. The emails are also disconnected. So we're trying. Uh, I am I guess, still researching an American company that's that does do some weather modification on a smaller scale here. So hopefully... Uh, we can get something out of that. But I think it's an important topic to, to absolutely bring up. Yes, yes. We are trying our best to try to find somebody. That's the biggest problem is finding someone to talk to. Because like Andrew said, we need, a, we need an expert on this to be able to uh, give us good detail. Because I can tell you I know not a lot about weather modification. <laughs> Me neither. So yeah, we, we need a really reliable person that's got a good solid set of facts that aren't swayed in... Uh one direction or the other because we know especially in today's politically charged environment uh that is extremely important uh for us to make sure that we're doing so great question uh kind of stay tuned if you will we're going to keep chugging away at that and see what we can find out absolutely all right we've taken in too much of your your wednesdays <laughs> yeah we're seven minutes over good question so you guys had great questions today we appreciate it We'll see you guys uh, this upcoming weekend. Stay tuned for what we'll do next week. We'll see what happens with the schedule. I know it sounds like it's going to get a little crazy, so uh, we'll let you guys know what's going to happen. But otherwise, you guys enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, and we'll see you this weekend. Take care. Cooper's going in detention. <laughs>